so I, I had just gone to bed around 10 o'clock and then probably about an hour later or so my phone just started to go off. At that point there were these, they said there were two that were dead and you know maybe 20 injured so at that moment I thought you know we might see some they'll probably be taken mostly to you know the trauma centers um, but then I got a call from one of our ER doctors saying that they had already received you know uh, you know four dead on arrival and, and probably 50 or 60 or so already in the ER. Imagining of it was you know maybe a, a car load of people or a drive-by shooting where several people were involved and they were nearby and they came in. Uh, I had no idea it was going to be what it was. As I was driving in the police officers were passing me and I was doing a pretty good clip and uh, they were passing me at 90 so I knew what was ever what whatever was going on was more serious than I had thought. The majority of uh, injuries were gunshot wounds and they just filled the waiting room. I didn't expect that many uh, significantly wounded patients to come in through the front end. Very surprising and, and nothing typical at all. We realized that the ambulances were going from the Mandalay Bay area to, to the trauma center which was either UMC or Sunrise. So they were bypassing us all together but the truck brigade just map quested us and we're the closest hospital to that to that event and so they just came here so the people that were coming through the front door they were all injured and they all had, most of them had gunshot wounds but they didn't go through the regular route they just got dropped off and that's where we, I mean things that's the part that people don't understand with the small community hospital we became a trauma center you know within minutes or seconds of people dropping off the their you know these people out of these trucks and there's so many patients that we had that I asked, how'd you get here? They said, I came in the back of a truck. And there wasn't like one or two in the back of the truck. There were like 10 or 12 people in a truck. But it was full. I mean, that front entrance of the, you know, the waiting room was full. It's that people can't lose hope. And I think that's what, you know, I don't know what we're going to call it, but that cowboy truck brigade gave these people hope. And so they knew that they would, they would, they would get better. They, they had hope that things would change. I think if you lose hope, then you become discouraged and things go downhill. I said that's the one thing I learned that night was, you know, you know let other people help you and, and give them a place to, you know, feel safe. And I think that's what happened.